I'm Johnny, and it's time for Deep Dreaming 2, Electric Boogaloo. We need to go deeper. That's what she said. If you haven't seen the last video, go visit that rabbit hole right now. Last video, I talked all about Google's Deep Dreaming, what it is, and just a basic overview about neural nets. Now that you're back, we can talk about all the ways in which I was wrong. Because if you'll pardon the expression, it's a little deeper than that. I alluded to the fact that neural networks generally are these little nodes that have a whole bunch of interconnections between them. Well, the whole point of the Google's deep dream neural net is that there aren't a whole bunch of connections. It's actually called a sparse neural net, which is pictured up here. But wait, there's more. This neural net is not just a whole bunch of interconnected nodes. No, 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 no. I mean, it's Google. Come on. It's a network of neural nets, which is why it's so good at what it does, which is to say, like, actually be a thing that is computer vision and also why it makes such crazy pictures. This is a map of Google's neural net. And it's not that each box is a node. Each box here is its own neural net. We have to go deeper. So with that done, just what the heck is deep dreaming anyways? So the whole point is to take a certain chunk of the neural net and expose it to the world. And you do this by adding a bit of randomness to a photo, then looking at that photo with the neural net in different scales, zooming in and out, figuring out what it recognizes and based on what it recognizes, output a picture. Now, Google's neural net has been trained on a lot of dogs, or so I've been told. And that's why every picture is like four-legged dog beast. Blah. That's the whole point of Deep Dream. It's not to make crazy, funky pictures. That's just a side effect. It's really to look at the different levels inside of this crazy 22-odd layered deep neural net of nets and see what it's recognizing to probe into it a little deeper. <laughs> that's what she said. It's similar to the way that we all see faces in your bog standard North American power plugs. Ooh. Now, it gets crazy town when you start iterating these things. Because the first time through on a Google Deep Dream, it's just like, oh, hey, that could be a dog. That could be a pagoda. That could be a car. But when you take that thing that, you know, it could be a car, when you take that output and feed it back on itself, it's like, oh, yeah, no, that, that's looking like a dog. And then eventually it's like, oh, yeah, that is definitely a five-legged wilde dog beast. Basically, your input is the previous dream, and it's like this dreamception. There's a lot to explore here, and I'm only just scratching the surface. I can't wait to explore it even more. But... I'm going to leave you off with some of the dreaming that I've been doing where I sample different levels of the neural net uh, after a set number of iterations. And so at first it's funky and linear, and then it goes into crazy town snail dog beasts. Five-legged, three-headed, wilde dog beasts are fun.